Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at integrating payments with Stripe. A few months ago I did this exact same tutorial but with Braintree and it seems like it's about time to do one of their competitors in the same space. What I actually did for this video was took the same application that I had for the Braintree demonstration and just pulled out all the Braintree customizations and put in Stripe customizations instead. And so when you're finished watching the video, or even while you're watching the video, you can go onto GitHub and it's in the same repository, it's just on a different branch, appropriately named Stripe, as you can imagine. So let's jump right into it. So Stripe is another payments processor like Braintree, like up oh, there are a lot of there are a lot of ones out there. Those are those two are some of the biggest ones though. PayPal obviously is is a huge one and Braintree is a subsidiary of PayPal. But anyways, so we're going to continue with the Pokey Commerce example. By the way, it is summer 2016. Pokémon is all the rage. I just want to say, you know, go back to the video in February. I was on this I was on this Pokémon train before before all the hype started. That's okay. I'm like happy that the hype started. It makes it makes this example, you know, a little more pertinent and everything. So we're here in case you missed the last video, I'll put a link in the description. But in case you missed the last video, the premise is we have a an online store for Pokemon. And Articuno is and always will be my favorite. So the the one that's available for sale here is of course Articuno and let me just show you what the what what the two checkout processes look like you go to the show page and you can do pay with card it's just a modal very simple drop in this integration takes like 45 seconds and we'll cover that one the second one the alt checkout that I have goes to a different page, it hits a different controller, it's a different view and everything, but it's the same UX after that where you just put in an email, you put in the card, and you do that. Yay! So that's great. Why, why are there two different ones? Well it's not apparent on the front end, but on the back end when we actually get into it, you'll see why there's those two different methods. and. So yeah, and, and you'll see advantages and disadvantages to each of them. Actually, they don't really have disadvantages. They're they're both pretty solid, and neither of them is too terribly difficult to get started with. So, I used this as my guide basically, and so this is what we're going to go through. Checkout, by the way, is the name of the of the modal of this pop-up, and they of course have an API if you want to make your own custom forms and everything like that but if you just want if you just want a drop-in solution it's it's there for you and it's ready to go so let's do it so you have to add the stripe gem of course to your gem file let's see where's that gem file stripe run bundle to get it and then make a new controller. So Rails G controller charges. Here's the charges controller. And by the way, so you need to at, at this point you you should have signed up for a Stripe account and you need two different API keys. One is secret and one is public. So the secret one runs on your server obviously. The public one actually gets displayed in the browser similar to the brain tree exercise you need to set those in your environment variables so that it's not so that it, so that it's hidden basically and I have a a video for the .env rails gem which I will definitely have a link for and suggest that you check out if you don't already use that or don't already have some other way of setting environment variables so I'll take it for granted at this point that you signed up, that you have your API keys, and that you have them set. So in this charges controller, you need to do, you need to set this line of configuration: stripe.api key 
equals your secret key. And that will basically authenticate your server calls as they come in and go out. And then you need these two these two actions and you'll know new is for rendering the new page and then create is the action is the post action and that is where the actual submitting the the user's information to Stripe happens. And you can see that here in the documentation as well. Go ahead and copy and paste these in. Of course set your configuration there. You also need to add the routes. That's pretty easy. They suggest resources charges. If you want to make it something else, you're totally able to do that. In hindsight, I probably could have put these in the Pokemon controller and tried to give them different names than new and create so they wouldn't clash with with the new and create for the Pokemon resource itself. After that, so you have to configure Rails itself to have your your API keys available when the application starts. And so inside your config slash initializers folder, you have to create a file called stripe.rb and basically just set it to that. And of course, publishable key refers in your environment file to the public key and secret key refers to obviously the secret one. So that's pretty straightforward. Next is the views. And so you can pretty much really literally just copy and paste these um, unless you want to unless you want to make your own of course. And I suppose in the real world, when you're making something, you're going to want to create your own. But for the, for the sake of this example, I just copied and pasted these. And that's pretty much the whole thing. So that's, that was you know pretty painless. Not much customization going on, to be honest. And that's why it was so easy, because I really did just copy and paste a lot of this. But some of it is, is a little harder. Or, or I should say, it does get a little harder when you start making customizations and I thought it was still worth making this video because there's some stuff that they like don't tell you and you kinda have to figure out yourself for example that you have to put the API key here that's not mentioned anywhere on the tutorial but it will not work unless that is there so going back to the question from before on why two different controllers, why not just have this one or why not just have the other one? And the answer is this first method, which is this, more or less, just this part. This is the drop-in version that is entirely independent, or I should say almost entirely independent of your back end. Obviously, it's rendering your publishable key, but there's not, there's no exchange of information from what the user submits and your server. And that's great for security purposes, because like in an ideal world, you don't want your customer's credit card information touching your servers. That's just, that's just a recipe for disaster. And so having a drop-in solution like this just makes it so that you don't have to deal with that it goes directly from the customer's computer to Stripe, no intervention on your part, and that's, that's fine, it's out of your hands. On the other hand, if you do want to collect some of your customer's information, like other information that isn't available in the, in the default pop-up, that's when you might want to use the alt checkout because that exposes this action for you. And so these are the, like the only params that get picked up by the form, but you could theoretically add params, zip code, you could add first name, last name, you could add all sorts of extra stuff that is not there by default. This all checkout is a better way to go if you want a little bit more control over your checkout flow. So I hope this was helpful. 
definitely leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm definitely happy to help, and I will see you in the next video.